Crusade of the Lost Souls Chapter 1 Shadows of the Orient The year was 1920, and the world was still emerging from the shadows of the Great War. In the dimly lit office of private detective Edgar Sinclair, the air hung heavy with the scent of cigar smoke as he reviewed the latest case files. Little did he know that these seemingly unrelated crimes would thrust him into an intricate tapestry of mystery and danger, all entwined with an ancient relic from the medieval crusades. It all began with a cryptic message delivered to Sinclair's office late one night, a message adorned with symbols reminiscent of a bygone era. Intrigued, he traced the origins of the message to the hidden cities of the Middle East, where ancient secrets whispered through the desert winds. The relic in question was said to hold unparalleled power, a force that had remained dormant for centuries until now. Sinclair, with his sharp mind and keen instincts, embarked on a journey that would take him far beyond the familiar streets of his city. His first destination, the bustling markets and narrow alleys of an oriental city veiled in mystery. The air was thick with the scent of exotic spices and the chatter of merchants haggling over wares. Sinclair moved through the crowded streets, his senses attuned to the subtleties of the surroundings, searching for any clue that would lead him to the heart of this enigma. His investigations took him to the hidden quarters of the city, where ancient traditions coexisted with the pulse of modern life. In a dimly lit tea house, he encountered a mysterious figure, a local informant with eyes that seemed to hold the way of centuries. The informant spoke of a serial killer who left behind a trail of bodies, each marked with symbols eerily similar to those on the relic. Sinclair's journey became a race against time as he navigated the labyrinthine streets, deciphering cryptic messages and connecting the dots between the crimes. The city's secrets revealed themselves slowly, like pieces of a puzzle falling into place. He discovered a network of underground societies, each guarding their own piece of the puzzle, and a clandestine trade in artifacts that hinted at a deeper, more malevolent force at play. The detective's pursuit of the serial killer led him to forgotten temples and hidden chambers, where whispers of lost souls seemed to permeate the very air. As he delved deeper, Sinclair uncovered a sect obsessed with the relic's power, believing it held the key to unlocking an ancient darkness. The relic, it seemed, was not merely an artifact but a vessel for something far more ominous. The tension in the city escalated as Sinclair closed in on the killer's lair. Narrow escapes and close encounters with the criminal's henchmen became a testament to the detective's resourcefulness. The shadows that clung to the corners of the oriental city seemed to pulse with an otherworldly energy, mirroring the dark forces Sinclair was on the brink of confronting. In the heart of the city, Sinclair finally confronted the serial killer in a pulse-pounding showdown. The criminal, driven by an obsession with the relic's power, revealed a twisted philosophy that linked the ancient artifact to the very fabric of existence. The detective's skills were put to the ultimate test as he faced an adversary who seemed to draw strength from the shadows themselves. As the first chapter of Sinclair's Odyssey reached its climax, the Oriental City stood as a backdrop to a battle between light and darkness. The relic's secrets were only beginning to surface, and Sinclair realized that the shadows he had entered were but the outermost layers of a mystery that spanned centuries. The detective, undeterred and fueled by a relentless pursuit of the truth, stood at the threshold of a crusade that would take him across continents and through the corridors of time itself. Chapter 2 Whispers in the Gothic Cathedrals 
Edgar Sinclair, having unraveled the mysteries of the Oriental City, found himself drawn further into the labyrinth of enigma as he followed the trail of the ancient relic. His journey led him to the heart of Europe, where Gothic cathedrals rose like titans against the sky, their spires piercing the heavens. The air, once heavy with the scents of the Orient, now bore the cool fragrance of centuries-old stone and the echoes of forgotten whispers. In a city adorned with cobblestone streets and towering spires, Sinclair delved into the mysteries held within the Gothic cathedrals. Each cathedral, a testament to medieval craftsmanship, held its own secrets, guarded by gargoyles and saints alike. The detective wandered through the silent halls, his footsteps muffled by the cool embrace of ancient stone, seeking the elusive connections between the religious sanctuaries and the medieval relic. His investigation brought him to the archives of a grand cathedral, a repository of ancient manuscripts and sacred texts. Here, Amidst dusty tomes and illuminated manuscripts, Sinclair uncovered references to a brotherhood that had guarded the relic for centuries. The cryptic language of the text hinted at a power that transcended the physical realm, and the detective realized that he had stumbled upon a legacy that extended beyond the visible architecture of the cathedrals. Sinclair's journey through the Gothic cathedrals became a descent into the spiritual and the arcane. Stained glass windows told stories of crusaders and saints, their colors shimmering like kaleidoscopic visions of the past. The detective deciphered intricate carvings on the cathedral walls, uncovering a trail of symbols that mirrored those on the relic. Each clue brought him closer to the heart of the conspiracy that spanned the medieval era to the modern day. Whispers of lost souls echoed through the corridors of the cathedrals, their ethereal voices revealing a history steeped in mystery and intrigue. Sinclair found himself immersed in the timeless struggle between light and darkness, where the relics of the Crusades held the key to understanding the hidden forces that shaped the world. The cathedrals, with their towering spires and hidden chapels, became both a sanctuary and a battlefield in Sinclair's quest for truth. As he explored the grandeur of Gothic architecture, Sinclair encountered a secret society that had thrived in the shadows, manipulating events and safeguarding the relic for centuries. The detective's encounters with the clandestine brotherhood tested his resolve as he navigated through hidden chambers and confronted the guardians of the ancient legacy. The relics within the cathedrals, intricately connected to the medieval crusades, whispered tales of a power that could reshape destinies and alter the course of history. In one cathedral, Sinclair discovered a hidden chamber adorned with symbols that mirrored those on the relic. It was here that he encountered a cryptic holographic projection, an apparition of the Brotherhood's leaders who spoke in hushed tones about the relic's true purpose. The detective learned that the ancient artifact was not just a physical object, but a conduit for spiritual energies that bridged the mortal realm and the divine. The climactic moments of Sinclair's exploration unfolded within the towering heights of a grand cathedral, where he faced adversaries who sought to harness the relic's power for their own nefarious purposes. The battle between light and darkness played out amidst the arches and vaults, a clash of ideals and ancient forces that shook the very foundations of the cathedral. As Sinclair emerged from the Gothic cathedrals, the echoes of the spiritual battleground lingered in the air. The relics of the Crusades had become conduits for an otherworldly power, and the detective realized that the journey was far from over. The Gothic cathedrals, with their timeless beauty and hidden secrets, were but a stepping stone in a crusade that transcended continents and centuries, leading Sinclair deeper into the heart of the enigma that held the fate of lost souls in its grasp. Chapter 3 The Labyrinth and Trails 
Edgar Sinclair's search for the ancient item proceeded, taking him along winding paths that passed through magical settings and old cities. Driven by the cryptic hints that alluded to a sinister power entwined with the medieval crusades, he set out on a trip that crossed boundaries and traversed centuries from the majestic Gothic cathedrals of Europe. As Sinclair traversed the intricate trails, he found himself amidst the arid landscapes of the Middle East once more, drawn back to the region where the Oriental city had first whispered its secrets. The detective's path took him to hidden oases and ancient ruins, where the sands of time held echoes of a forgotten era. The relics of the Crusades, it seemed, had left their indelible mark on the very fabric of the land. Guided by the ley lines revealed in the cathedral archives, Sinclair navigated through forgotten trails that crisscrossed the desert. The ancient symbols on the relic resonated with the energy of the earth, leading him to remote locations where the boundaries between the mystical and the material blurred. The labyrinthine trails became a tapestry of history and mystery, unfolding before Sinclair like a map to the hidden truths that awaited him. In a city nestled amidst the dunes, Sinclair encountered a sect that had guarded the relic for generations. The followers of an ancient order, with robes adorned in symbols akin to those on the artifact, revealed themselves as keepers of the Crusade's legacy. Through cryptic rituals and sacred ceremonies, Sinclair gained insights into the relic's true nature and its connection to the lost souls that had traversed these labyrinthine trails before him. The journey, however, was not without its challenges. Sinclair faced ancient traps and riddles set by the guardians of the relic, each trial designed to test the detective's resolve and worthiness. The desert winds whispered secrets of those who had faltered, lost to the sands of time, their stories entwined with the enigmatic power that emanated from the relic. As Sinclair pressed forward, the labyrinthine trails led him to bustling marketplaces where artifacts from the Crusades were traded like echoes from the past. Hidden among the merchants and traders, he uncovered a clandestine network that sought to exploit the relic's power for personal gain. The detective's encounters with the shadowy figures of this covert trade unveiled a conspiracy that reached far beyond the deserts of the Middle East. The relic spoke of a malevolent force seeking to harness the ancient energy for dark purposes. Sinclair's adversaries, driven by avarice and ambition, became more formidable as the labyrinthine trails unfolded. The detective's intellect and resilience were put to the test as he raced against time, piecing together the fragments of the puzzle that hinted at the relic's true purpose. Sinclair's journey took him to forgotten temples buried beneath the shifting sands, where he discovered murals depicting the Crusades and the relic's journey through time. The labyrinthine trails converged in a hidden chamber, where the detective encountered a nexus of ley lines pulsating with energy. It was here that he glimpsed the scope of the dark power that the relic held, a force capable of transcending the boundaries between the spiritual and the earthly realms. In a climactic confrontation within the labyrinthine trails, Sinclair faced the leaders of the covert network who sought to exploit the relic's power. The detective's determination and the relic's inherent energy became a formidable force against those who would unleash darkness upon the world. The ancient guardians, awakened by Sinclair's noble pursuit, lent their ethereal strength to the battle that unfolded in the heart of the desert. As the labyrinthine trails reached their zenith, Sinclair emerged victorious, the relic now resonating with a purified energy that transcended the shadows that had sought to corrupt it. The guardians, satisfied that the relic was once again safeguarded, retreated into the mystical landscape, leading the detective to contemplate the next step in his crusade against the forces that sought to manipulate the power of the crusades for their own ends. 
The labyrinthine trails, now etched in Sinclair's journey, bore witness to the detective's unwavering resolve and illuminated the path ahead. The enigma of the relic deepened, and the labyrinth secrets hinted at a convergence of destinies that awaited Sinclair as he ventured further into the heart of the crusade for lost souls. Chapter 4 The Abyss of Darkness Edgar Sinclair, having braved the shadows of the Orient, deciphered the whispers in the Gothic cathedrals, and navigated the labyrinthine trails of the Middle East, now stood on the precipice of the final chapter in his relentless pursuit of the ancient relic, the Abyss of Darkness. The culmination of his odyssey awaited him as he prepared to confront the malevolent forces that sought to exploit the relic's power for nefarious purposes. As Sinclair delved deeper into the enigma, he found himself drawn to a desolate castle perched atop a cliff overlooking the tumultuous waves of the sea. The relic, its symbols glowing with an ethereal light, resonated with the energies of the ley lines converging upon this ominous location. The abyss of darkness loomed before him, a metaphorical and literal descent into the unknown. The castle, with its crumbling towers and hidden passages, became the battleground for Sinclair's final confrontation. The relics of the crusades that adorned the castle walls seemed to bear witness to the eons of struggle between light and darkness. As the detective explored the shadowy corridors, he uncovered the remnants of a forgotten order, one that had succumbed to the allure of the relic's power. In the bowels of the castle, Sinclair encountered the mastermind behind the conspiracy, a malevolent figure who had harnessed the relic's energy to unleash a force that could plunge the world into an eternal abyss of darkness. The adversary, draped in shadows and wielding the corrupted power of the relic, reveled in the imminent triumph of chaos over order. The climactic battle unfolded within the castle's grand hall, where Sinclair faced adversaries empowered by the relic's dark energies. The symbols on the ancient artifact flickered with an intensity that mirrored the struggle between the forces of light and the encroaching abyss. The detective, armed with knowledge gained from the oriental city, gothic cathedrals, and labyrinthine trails, stood resolute against the tide of darkness. The relic, now purified by Sinclair's unwavering pursuit of justice, emitted a radiant glow that clashed with the malevolent aura emanating from the adversary. The bow transcended the physical realm, with energies colliding in a spectacular display of light and shadow. The castle's foundations trembled as the abyss of darkness fought against the illumination of truth. As Sinclair faced his ultimate adversary, he tapped into the ley lines that converged upon the castle, drawing upon the ancient energies that had guided him through his journey. The detective's determination became a beacon of hope against the encroaching darkness, and the relic responded by channeling its pure energy to counter the corrupted forces. In a moment of revelation, Sinclair uncovered the true purpose of the relic, it was not merely an artifact of the Crusades, but a celestial key capable of sealing the abyss and restoring balance to the forces at play. The detective, guided by an innate understanding of the relic's potential, utilized its power to create a barrier that contained the abyss within the castle walls. The adversary, stripped of the relic's dark energies, crumbled before Sinclair's resolute will. The malevolent force dissipated, leaving behind echoes of the struggle that had unfolded within the abyss of darkness. The castle, once a bastion of shadow, now stood as a testament to the triumph of light over the encroaching darkness. As Sinclair emerged from the abyss, the relic, now devoid of the malevolent energies that had tainted it, pulsed with a serene radiance. The ley lines, no longer influenced by the forces of darkness, returned to their natural state. The detective, 
having vanquished the shadows that sought to exploit the relic, contemplated the significance of his journey. The crusade for lost souls had reached its conclusion. The relic, once a harbinger of darkness, now held the potential for enlightenment and redemption. Sinclair, having traversed continents and centuries, emerged from the abyss of darkness with newfound wisdom. The enigma that had fueled his journey had unraveled, leaving behind a legacy of lessons learned and mysteries solved. As the detective gazed upon the horizon, the echoes of the crusade for lost souls lingered in the air. The relics of the crusades, now free from the clutches of malevolence, whispered tales of a world reborn. Sinclair, having faced the shadows with unwavering resolve, now stood on the threshold of a new chapter, one where the relics of the past held the promise of a future bathed in the light of redemption and understanding. Please watch the other videos from our playlists. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel to keep updated with new captivating mysteries.